Tandem Nomads, episode 112. That is an important, it doesn't have to be one conversation. It can be a set of conversations, right? It's um, when you decide to to link your life to somebody else, it's it's important to know that, that you see things the same way. Hello, Nomad Nation. I am Emel Deregi. I'm a marketing and business coach and the founder of Tandem Nomads. Tandem Nomads is the entrepreneurship platform designed to help expat partners, build and grow a successful portable business and thrive in their global nomadic life. And this is all we are about today is all about how to make sure that we are thriving in that journey. We know that this expat life many in many occasions is often an accident. A lot of expat partners and global nomads will tell you that it just happened. But there are a lot of things to think about and to prepare on this journey to make the best of it on the move, be it regarding your career, your uh, business, but also your family choices and your relationship choices. So in this episode, we are going to talk about the choices and try to invite you to think of the main question you want to ask yourself while you're working on this journey to figure out if you are making conscious choices along the journey for you. And in order to share with you some great insights, I brought to you our guest today, Katya Vlachos. Katya, are you ready for the ride? I've been born ready, Amel. (laughs) Oh, yes. Katya is a researcher and policy analyst by training with a master's from Harvard and a PhD from the Rand Corporation. In the first chapter of her career, she worked for more than a decade as a researcher and defense analyst in the United States and Europe. In her second and current chapter, she followed her passion and built on her personal experience and extensive research to publish her book entitled A Great Move, Surviving and Thriving in Your Expat Assignment. Katya writes on cross-cultural adaptation and rewards and challenges of expat life and has published articles in the Harvard Business Reviews and the Huffington Post and Thrive Global, among others. So you definitely have here an expert who can share with you so many great insights. And I also want to share with you that Katya is the co-active, is a co-active co trained at the the Coaches Training Institute. She works with expats and global mobile professionals at various stages of her transition, whether it's international moves, career change, or relationship breakdown. So Katya, I try to say as much as I could about your journey and your great, great assets and experience, but is there anything I missed? And let me know what's happening in your world right now. Thank you, Amel. That's a very kind introduction. And I think you've covered pretty much everything that's happening. Uh, Right now, I'm trying to uh, split my time between promoting the book, uh, which is almost a full-time job, and uh, and then working with my clients. And Mm -hmm. I am really passionate about helping, uh, which is relevant to what we're talking about today. I'm really passionate about helping um, strong, ambitious, smart, expert women reconnect with their professional identities, uh, which may become a little bit elusive after uh, one or or more moves. So uh, I'm very, very uh, happy to be able to help them on that journey. That's and give them back their power and get back their power. Yes. And I think we both share that, that passion for empowering and helping you know, women empower themselves because we. I often say that I know we don't give the power to people. People take their own power. But if we can just guide them through the journey to have those aha moments and those resources and inspiration that can help them get further and closer to being empowered for their own journeys and their own choices, <laughs> which is the topic of today. So thank you so much for coming in here and sharing with us your experience. You're going to be sharing your own personal journey and your expertise and the topic of how to support women make their choices. Uh, but before we do that, could you please let us know a little bit more about your book, uh, A Great Move, and what led you to write this book? All right. So, uh, so the book is called A Great Move, Surviving and Thriving in Your Expert Assignment. Mm-hmm. And it's basically a, a, um, a guidebook or a manual for making successful international moves. It's, um, it, it starts with, with setting the foundations, the foundational principles of making uh, an international move. So what do we need to keep in mind? 
uh, you know, what are the basics? And then it continues on to a more practical part where, um, where I go through every uh, phase of a move from deciding to preparing to actually making the move and then just settling into a new place and look at, you know, what are the key decisions uh, that need to be made? What are the key areas to focus on? What are very common mistakes? Um, you know, and how do people cope in general? How can they cope better? And it's a combination of, of kind of, <laughs> I don't want to say the theory, but more abstract concepts, but also a lot of uh, stories that illustrate those concepts. So I think it's, it's, that also makes it an easier read. It's not a dry kind of <laughs> research mm-hmm. uh, report like I used to write in my previous life, but it, it is based on research. I've done a lot of um, uh, interviews and case studies and a lot of research, but um, you know, it's also very, uh, very real. Could you take us real briefly through your international background? I guess so that we can understand where this comes from. Um, so I was born in Cameroon, Africa, and uh, spent the first four years of my life there. Um, about a year in transition where I was going, I think I went to like four kindergartens in, 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 in that year uh, between Cameroon and Greece, and then eventually transitioned to Greece uh, with my mother and my newborn brother. And, uh, but I, was, I, was, I spent my formative years there, so I left for graduate school, uh, as I said, when I was uh, 24. And, uh, and then from, from there, I moved to France. Then uh, I moved back to the U.S. to the West Coast. So my, sorry, my, my graduate school was in the East Coast. So then I moved back to the West Coast, uh, to L.A. Then I moved to Leiden, the Netherlands, for a little bit. Then to Vienna for a much longer bit, <laughs> which is ironic because that was a place where I struggled. And for the past six years, I've been in Zurich, in Switzerland. And yeah, I don't know where next. We'll see. For the moment, I want to stay here, though. I kind of like it. And I have teenagers. So that makes it harder to move. Yeah. Talking about really real, it is indeed like this book is all about, you know, the real stuff of the move and what we have to think about and when we want to prepare. But I also loved when you were sharing your story, how it comes from your own realization. Yeah. So could you tell us what triggered that moment where you decided to write this book? You know, like most things, it came out of a struggle. Um, I was uh, I was several years into my my expat journey. I mean, I, I left uh, my home country, Greece, uh, when I was twenty four, and several years into that um, that journey, I had uh, one move that was you know really different, uh, where I struggled. You know, before that, I had. You know, it wasn't such a big deal. I would adjust relatively easily. I would go through different stages of transition. I knew how to cope uh, with moving to a new place and feeling at home. And then there was one move to um, to Vienna, Austria, uh, in particular that um, that where I, you know, for the first time in my life, I found myself really struggling. I couldn't feel at home. I couldn't understand the the mentality. I couldn't connect to people. I hated the weather. <laughs> <laughs> as, a, as a Greek, um, and and let's not forget, I moved there from LA, so very different. After a while, you know, I started meeting people uh, in Vienna, and you know, I met those who were like me, complaining about everything. But I also mel- met people who were perfectly fine living in Vienna, and in particular, I met a Greek person who was very similar to me in background, and she was perfectly happy to live there, mm. and I just couldn't make sense of it. So I think that's what triggered my, my researcher brain to start looking into it and try to understand, okay, why did this happen to me? Why didn't this happen to her? What is it that shapes how we cope with transitions? Why do people struggle while others thrive? In, mm. in, you know, what, what is it that makes a difference? Is it personality? Is it the circumstances of a move? Is it the location? Um, you know, like what is it that changes that and how can we influence that and struggle a little bit less? So, so this book ended up being what I wish I would have had when mm. I moved to Vienna. You know, a lot of the concepts I, I talk about in this book, like the concept of home, you know, I wish I had known then what I need to feel at home and, and done more of that, you know, to create that home. 
Yeah. So uh, yeah, so it's been it's been my baby for for several years actually. I'm, I'm and really now it's out. Now. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's yeah, it's it's huge for me. <laughs> so Nomad Nation, if you're interested, you should really check it out. We'll put the link of this book in the show note of this episode. I call show note just for those of you. Uh, it's basically the web page of this episode. So um, there's one part that I want to emphasize on before we go further is the fact that you moved until you went to LA for your own career, right? And mm -hmm. from there you start moving. Can you tell us about what, because mm -hmm. that makes a difference. Yeah. Yes. So, so the difference for me in that move to Vienna was that I didn't choose a move mm -hmm. or I felt that I had no choice. And that put me in a certain mindset that was mm -hmm. not constructive. So I was, um, I felt angry. I felt resentful. Um, I felt powerless. Um, the whole victim mentality that mm -hmm. um, prevented me from wanting to integrate or to feel at home. Um, and of course, because I didn't want to feel at home, I also didn't do anything for myself. I didn't. Mm -hmm. Uh, as I said, I didn't try to understand what home means for me, but I also didn't try to, uh, I don't know, look into what the professional options were for me. I mean, I was, I was very much in that kind of pushback mode and so I wasn't were, that for several you were years. Joining, yeah. Sorry. Just to explain. Cause so I was you, following. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I was following my husband. So this was, yeah. uh, essentially, I didn't feel like it was my decision. Whereas mm -hmm. before that, uh, it was clearly my decision. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, what I, what I now got out of that is that I'm very good at, at, at sabotaging myself and not holding myself hostage mm. because yes, it wasn't technically my choice, but uh, there were aspects, you know, there were areas where I had a choice and having a different mindset or more like being in a different state, like a more positive state or more empowered state would have allowed me to look for those areas where I had choices and, and, and then, you know, make it work for me. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. And that's a perfect transition, I think, to the topic of today, which is the choice and the fact that you and, and I realized that we actually have the choices and what we're doing here in Nomad Nation, we work Katya and I on three types of choices that I think that every expert partner in Global Nomad should think about on the move. We will focus a lot on the expat partner aspect because we know that this is what Tandem Nomads is, is based on, the expat partner's journey. Uh, but we also want to make sure that we include um, also some of the aspects for all of you who are listening who are not expat partners. Um, but I love, Katya, that you said at the beginning, I had no choice, but I realized I actually had. I just didn't realize I had cho a choice. We always have choices. Uh, yeah. We just we just need to look for it. I mean, we even when we feel we don't have a choice, and I know a lot of people out there is, are going to say, you know what, we're a military family. We don't choose where we're posted. We don't choose how long we're staying, you know, or our company moves us, uh, you know, when it's the, you know, the first few uh, moves or, or when you're not high enough on the, on the hierarchy, you don't always have a choice, you know, or you can choose to 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 you know, to end your career or, or to put your career on hold uh, if you don't move, but, uh, but often you don't. And, and then, okay, how do you, um, you know, how do you find those, those areas where you have a choice? Maybe you can't choose the location, but uh, how about the timing or, mm -hmm. or how about all the decisions that follow a move? You know, you do have a choice perhaps over where you're going to live or how you will make a move work for you, you know, figuring out uh, what your goals are and, and, you know, what are the, um, what are the resources you need? What are the barriers and how can you address them? I mean, all these are areas where you can, you usually are able to make decisions. Yeah. Even definitely. if you can't influence the, 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 the actual move, the location or you know, the decision to move. Yeah, definitely. So we have three types of choices that we're going to discuss here together. And the first one is what you just mentioned, the the choice to say yes or no to the move. And at the end of the day, also the choice to prepare it. So uh, can you start with telling us, um, you know, how are you approaching now being strong with your past experience? How are you now approaching that choice and helping your clients to make the choice to say yes or no to a move? Mm -hmm. First of all, very good point. 
always consider the possibility that I can say no. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a real choice. You can say yes or no. And, and sometimes you might be able to say no if it doesn't work for you. But how do you, how do you know that? So um, ideally, and I, I think, you know, we're mostly talking about couples, you know, sit yeah. down with your partner before um, the possibility of a move comes up. Sit down when you, you know, when, you th- when things are serious or when you decide to get married and, and talk about, you know, what are your dreams? What are your goals? What are your ambitions? Um, how do you see your life going forward? Um, talk about potentially moving, you know, if that's something that's on the agenda. And um, what's your model for approaching that? You know, how do you make it work? And there's different ways to look at it when you have, you know, can have the dual career couple, but you can have many different um, variations of that. Uh, uh, people can take turns or people can decide, no, we're going to do it simultaneously and we're only going to move when we have opportunities for both. Uh, or you may decide that one career takes precedence over the other. Um, but then again, it depends what the, the one that doesn't take precedence, you know, what happens with that? Do you, what kind of career do you have? Uh, so what's your model, you know, decide how you want to be. And of course, you know, have this kind of foundational conversation, but of course be aware that, you know, circumstances change, be flexible, be prepared to renegotiate. I mean, it is, everything is a negotiation, right? So I think it's really important to have that conversation. Very few couples do. Um, what happens usually is the opportunity, comes up and and then you need to decide really fast and and often yeah. there's no time to think exactly. about all that i think that's i just yeah. want to summarize that point i would say first make sure before it even comes up make sure that your partner and you are aligned in what you want for your life together that's how it i don't know if this is what how you would summarize it in a way yeah absolutely yeah be aligned you know it's it's negotiating the terms of your marriage but yeah be aligned in in your values your goals your support for each other mm-hmm. um you know are what's the big picture of how you see your life and are you willing to support each other um to pursue you know your goals your 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 you yeah. know to and do you have value. any advice on how to do that you know how to have that conversation because it's one thing to know that it's important to communicate and everybody says it's so important to communicate, but how to actually do it. It's not, it's not something natural for everyone to sit down and have that constructive conversation in a constructive way. Yeah. It it doesn't need to be like a big serious conversation, but when you meet someone and you get serious, don't you talk about what you want in life or I guess, yeah, I guess I didn't always talk about it a lot, but <laughs> but now that you're listening to this podcast, you know, <laughs> exactly. that is an important, yeah. it doesn't have to be one conversation. Yeah, it exactly. It's a set of conversations, right? It's um, when you decide to to link your life to somebody else, it's it's important to know that that you see things the same way. Yeah. And uh, and and this is just putting a bit more structure to it. I mean, there's things you sense and and you you know you have a feeling for, mm. but this is you know I'm not asking you to do a prenup or a, or a contract, even though some people would do that, and it's great. But uh, but just you know, as you said, being aligned. Yeah. There's another thing that you said that are for me. I want to insist on and highlight is the renewal negotiation part that you do have moments where you renegotiate um, and it's okay it's not because you decided something that you can't change your mind maybe you said I never want to move and that was the agreement but then suddenly you're like oh I'm actually ready now to move somewhere so uh, to be to have that I would say it's important to have that conversation more than once let's not just say oh we discussed this when we met and now you know, that's it. That conversation has to happen on a regular basis. And I know that with my husband, we make it a point to have like a date night and we do ask ourselves at least, you know, a, a few times in the year where we are in our life and how do we feel about where we're going. So I think that's, that's important. So now let's say the move opportunity comes in. How do we evaluate that decision? So, so what I advise people is, is when there's, there's something, you know, when there's, there's a potential offer coming or when there's an actual offer coming, sit down again and, and make sure you both understand and are aligned in your understanding of what it means for every area of your life. You know, what are the implications for, you know, your professional life, your career, both of you, uh, if that's that's an issue, uh, your social life, your support, you know, very important, especially if you're planning to start a family, if you have a family already, uh, your personal development, and also especially for the role dynamics. 
uh, mm-hmm. between you. You know, what's the move going to mean? How is the balance of power? And I don't like to use power when I talk about relationships, but, but um, how is that going to change uh, within your couple or within your family with this move? And, and, you know, make sure also that you understand what each of you needs from this move to be able to thrive. And, and so knowing the implication, knowing what you need, that gives you an idea about what kind of resources you're going to need, what kind of support uh, you're going to need, how you can provide that for each other. Um, so even, you know, when you don't have a lot of time to decide, it's important to take, you know, whatever time you have mm-hmm. and talk about that and try to think of, you know, all possible areas that are, that are important to you and make sure you're both on board when you actually do decide, you know, and ideally you would, each of you would have their own reasons for making the move. So, you know, even if it's, you know, job opportunity for, for one of you, which is usually the case, okay, then the other partner should ideally have their own motivation for making the move, you know, because you will have figured out, okay, what do they need? Where are their goals? How can you make it happen? So, so the more uh, alignment there is on the decision, um, the higher the likelihood that, that both are going to work hard to make this move a success. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, and I've seen many cases where, where partners were not aligned and, and, you know, it shows up down the road. It does. So, uh, yeah. And also very important, clarify, is this a one-time thing or is this a lifestyle choice? Exactly. Because I've also seen differences there and, and that's, that's difficult when the next assignment shows up and one person's like, no, 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 we're going home. <laughs> and the other one's like, no, but we agreed. Yeah. So um, be behind on that as well. That's, that's really that's, important. Is it a one-time experience or is it going to be a lifestyle choice? That's such yeah. a good point. And I love that you brought it up. And you, dis- you, you, dis- you me- mentioned briefly the five areas where you have to think about the decision that you're making. I think that's also in your book. Can you... Um, can you say them once more so that we can remember them? Uh, as a career, professional, um, social life, mm-hmm. uh, support system. Uh, it was also personal development, personal growth, yeah. and uh, the role dynamics. The role dynamics. You know, the, the, yeah. Okay. So do, you, like go, within the do you go through that in your book? I think you do, right? Um, I do talk about that. Yeah, yeah I do yeah, talk about the different areas in the yeah, book. Yeah, so yes, if absolutely. we can go through it in details. But I like that categories to think, okay, what does it mean for my career? What does it mean for my personal development? What does it mean for my support network? What is, does it mean for my relationship? And the fifth one I forgot. <laughs> yeah, the social life, then, uh, yeah, yeah, the role dynamics, but also it can be what does it mean for my health? I don't know. Yeah. If you move awesome. to like an extremely humid country and you have asthma, you know, maybe it's going to be really challenging for you. Right. I don't know. I mean, there's, there's areas you don't always think about that, um, you know, may turn out to be pretty important. So That's a very good point. Yeah. Think about the health aspects. So you want to really consider where are the areas that are important in your life right now that might be disrupted by the move and how is that move going to affect it in a way or another mm-hmm. but so let's say we're discussing this about aligning you know those areas and the decision but I want to talk about the alternative let's say that we're two people in this decision we I would I think you would agree that it's also important to include the kids in this decision making process. Uh, but for the sake of time we can't go deeper into that. But let's say we just have two people <laughs> in this decision making process. And um so let's imagine we don't have alignment. So what do we do? How do we try to get closer to each other's needs? Yeah, the, the only way I see of doing that is, is is talking about it, communicating, just like until you get alignment. And if you don't, then don't move. Yeah. Uh, and I'm very, you know, I'm adamant about that. Do not move if both partners are not aligned, as, you know, especially if, if one is, is even more extreme, like really doesn't want to move. Because mm. uh, you're not only risking the assignment or, or the, the, you know, the move itself, the success of the move, uh, mm-hmm. you're also risking your relationship. I mean, yeah. this can be very disruptive. So uh, I have goosebumps right now just because I think this is something, I don't know if you agree with me, Katya, that as expert partners, when an opportunity like this comes for a partner for a career, it's such a difficult decision to say, no, I won't move, even if this is great for you. Yeah, exactly. So you say the no after you've explored 
all opportunities, all potential, you know, choices for you. And if you really cannot make it work, if you're really going to be miserable, then, you know, don't do it just to be nice and supportive because if you're going to be miserable, it's going to have an impact. It's going to have a ripple effect on, on every other area of your life, you know, including your family, including your relationship, including your children. Yeah. It's, it becomes toxic. So you have the choice in Nomad Nation to at some point say no. And I think this is one of the major messages we want to share with you here, that the choice starts with preparation. But if you have done your due diligence, if you have discussed it, and at some point it's still not the right thing for you and for your needs, then you have to make sure that you know that you've got the right to say no. And, um, and it's for the sake of not only your needs, but also your relationship. Mm-hmm. So. And and your needs are as valuable. It's not selfish to have needs, mm. you know. It's we often, especially women, we often see often see that our needs come after everybody else's, and you know, myself included. And uh, and I have learned that no, it's not selfish to want certain things for ourselves. Yeah, and you've so. learned it the first place, and we'll see actually how you have implemented that in your own life. But I want to just bring in before we move to the next type of choice to think about when we are on the move, um, the one of alternate, like I see some couples who actually find an alternative solution, which is not yes, not no. For instance, uh, like I see more and more couples where the partner stays at home and the working partner moves back and forth. Mm-hmm. So that's a, a model that's becoming more common. It comes with certain expenses in terms of, life balance, I guess, and things like that. But I don't know if you have any insights about that. What do you think about that? Um, As you said, it's becoming more and more uh, common. I think a big driver of that is is dual careers. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of partners are not willing to drop everything and move uh, if they have a, a, a growing or a successful career already. And, and it takes a lot of organization, but I, I see more and more people doing that. I, I, I talk to people who, who are doing that and, and they're both, you know, they're, they're fulfilled on their own ends. I think that's positive for their relationship. You know, there's not one person sitting at home being miserable. They're both happy. It is a lot more work to make sure the schedule is aligned and who travels when and when there's kids involved. I mean, you, you need... A, a solid support system. You need either family or really good caretakers you can trust because you're going to have to be away, both of you. I mean, it's going to happen. You're not going to be able to avoid it all the time, even you know if you're really well organized. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's that. My insight so far is that if you're well organized and have thought about your support, it's actually a good thing uh, oh, because right. you both get to pursue your dream. Interesting. Uh, so even different. if you do it part time make sure to build a support system. I mean, part-time where you alternate and have some, you know, um, the support system is always important. That's for sure. Yeah. And it has to be, you know, you have to be there for each other. It has to be a joint decision again, like everything and, and be prepared to support each other. You know, if I have to travel, can you try to be a little more flexible or, or if we know that one of us is more flexible, you know, now, uh, you know, later, can we, you know, make sure, you know, that person, takes priority and and then the other one can you know what i mean so so it all comes back again to the 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 understanding you have with your partner and and how you you tackle it yeah very important so actually a great transition to the second choice i think so we first uh with the first choice is basically say yes or no and prepare that choice make it a Make it a, a conscious choice to say yes or no, not just like, don't be just like following without even thinking about it and even having a discussion about it. So that's the first message here. We're not saying say yes, we're not saying say no, but but know that you have that conscious choice and in order to do it, communicate, but also do your due diligence to figure out what it means for you. But once you have said your yes, and um, as an expert partner especially, comes in the choice of career and building something meaningful for us and, and keeping our careers as a priority, especially as an expert partner who's following to support the partners, the working partner's career. So, um, can you take us through your experience with that before we go into some insights about that? Like what was your experience when you moved um, abroad to support your uh, partner's career? So 
as I said, it was a disaster, mostly because of me. Well, it was not a total disaster. I mean, I, I did <laughs> work. But um, but I, I went in with the mindset that, you know, I was a defense analyst and we were moving to a neutral country. And, you know, I, I was doing really interesting, important work. And I was like, I'm never going to get that here. And, you know, my career is over. Uh, there's nothing for me to do. So I was in this total, total denial. And, uh, and, and I think that prevented me from, from looking either for opportunities to do meaningful work in my field or at least to explore those. And if I found out that was not possible, to look for alternatives. You know, it took me several years to start my second career for which I'm, you know, I'm extremely happy. I much prefer over my old one, but, but I, I got there the hard way. And, and it would have been all easier if, if I had consciously uh, told myself, okay, let's see what's available, uh, even before we moved, yeah, ideally. And, and if nothing's available, okay, what can I do? Can I, um, uh, I don't know, can I uh, do a, a, another degree or some additional training? Or, or is there anything else that I'm interested in that I could try out? I mean, I don't know. It's um, just, you know, start to... Um, to think about it already um, early on. So what happened to me is I went there and over time, and of course, again, the timing plays a role because I started having children. Uh, I dropped out uh, for a while. Then I went back in. Then I, I got a job, but I wasn't like super happy. Then I dropped out again. So eventually, you know, I became disconnected from my professional identity. You know, the more I was out, the less confident I felt, the less competent I felt. Uh, and I remember, you know, mentioning uh, in, in New York during the book launch where you were that I would go to dinners with my husband, you know, corporate dinners, and and people wouldn't even ask me what I do, mm. and and you know, I because they assumed I wasn't doing anything. Uh, so it was it was sort of like a vicious circle, you know. The the more that happened, the longer I stayed away, the less confident I was to re-enter the job market. The more of a victim I felt. Mm. Um, so it took me a while to get out of that <laughs> mindset and, uh, I would not, you know, I would not wish everybody does it the hard way. I think it's much easier if you're a bit more aware of, of what yeah. your, your options are, what your choices so, are. So what is that constant choice? What is, what is it? What is your message about that conscious choice? What is the choice you think at the end of the day we have to make here? So the choice is not well first of all not to hold yourself hostage or be hostage to others or be hostage to your life situation but to feel more empowered you know it's again what i said this mindset shift mm -hmm. and through that mindset shift look for opportunities you know you always there there's always something out there even if it looks there isn't yeah so, so that's what i mean even you know even when you say somebody else decided for me um look you know Look for where your choice lies. You cannot control what happens. You know, you cannot control how your uh, ultimately, you know, how your partner's company, you know, decides to move you wherever. Uh, what you can control is your own mindset and in what you do for yourself. So, you know, know what your needs are. Ask for what you need from your partner. Uh, try to understand their point of view, but also be very clear that you know these are your needs and and just don't feel guilty. Yeah. about it because yeah. i think if we want to make um the career a priority i think we do need to have that conversation with the partner so that the partner can support us so basically i would say that choice that we need to make is am i making my career a priority or not and i want to talk about something that's very delicate especially in this space um but I want to make sure that while we talk about it, that nomination, you understand that for me, it's not saying we're choosing between our kids and our career because we know that the priority should always be, I mean, as a mom, I can only imagine that the priority is always the kids, right? Katya, you're the first one who can speak of it right now. But um, what do you have to say to those moms who do want to take care of their kids, but at the same time want to make their career a priority? What is your message to you who had a ki kids and and was looking to make your career priority that it's it's not an either or i don't think you necessarily have to choose yes of course when we have kids we uh you step back a little bit or you slow down a little bit i mean i took some time off around the birth you know of each of my kids uh but it it 
And and some people may choose to do this full time, but but if you're you're hesitant about it, if it doesn't feel right, it's not like you have to choose. You know, it's not like deciding to to prioritize your career means you're putting your children second. Mm. That's not true. I mean, I, I'm very passionate about my career and I'm passionate about my children. And I actually think it's good for my children that they see me happy and they see me fulfilled. Mm. And I'm a better person with them when I'm uh, fulfilled elsewhere as well than if I would only uh, be dealing with them 24 hours a day. I don't think I would be such a good person. Then. <laughs> but no, anyway, the, the message here is, is it's, it's not an either or. Yeah. Uh, it's actually a, a mutually uh, beneficial yeah. uh, you know, Definitely. situation, relationship. Yeah. yeah. I want to make a small side note before continuing on this. I wanted to think about the male um, spouses in general who also might suffer on the other side of the judgment of the society for making it a choice to actually stay at home and take care of the kids, you know? So I think that's also like a choice that some people make. And especially from like, we need to make sure that no matter what choice we make, we're not doing it because of what society thinks. It has to be a choice of what we want, you know? And if, if your choice is to take care of your kids, then do it. But we'll tell you what we think about this for a second. But I just want to make sure, first of all, that we never make this choice based on what other people think, but more on what we really, really want deep in us. Totally agree. I think what, what matters in the end is what you value, what you think is important. And, um, and when you follow that, when you honor those values, things feel right. Uh, and when you don't, they're off. And, and often we don't realize why they're off for a while. But uh, yeah, and your, your values, I mean, your core values rarely have to do, you know, with, with what others think of you. It's more, you know, how you feel, uh, what is authentic about you and, and what's important in your life. Actually, you talk a lot about values. And I think that's a work we all need to do to think about our values. And I would also say, what's our big why? What is what is it that makes us thrive? And what is it like you said, you knew that your career was important for you and you wanted it and it was important for your identity and your happiness. And, and it's not either, or you can do both. So, but in order to figure out what we want to do with our careers, once we decide to make it a priority, we need to know what's our big why. And mm-hmm. I would invite anyone who still struggles to know it to get help. And to get help to find that answer. I don't know if you, yeah, like, I would say the other choice is basically invi- investing, to choose to invest in the help we need to figure that out. Yeah, a very good point. I mean, for me, it was a game changer to figure that out. And it, again, this was my second career, mm. uh, to figure out what my purpose is in life. And mm. it really makes a huge difference in how you manage yourself, how you lead uh, your career, you know, how you make your decisions, you know, that sense of purpose, that why. Uh, But I didn't have it from the beginning because um, I guess, you know, nobody told me about it or I, you know, I didn't invest. I didn't know it was important to figure it out. It, It just, you know, it happened eventually. But if you know that, absolutely, you know, ask for help, get somebody to help you figure it out or, or sit down and think about what is important. What do you want to do? What legacy do you want to leave? Uh, how do you want people to think of you when you're not there anymore? How do you want your children to think of you? You know, things like that, you know, these kinds so, of questions. Kind yeah. of picture. So. so important. And I want to step in now in the other part that a little bit of a taboo. And I think I just want to share my message and I'll let you add if if you don't agree with it or whatever you might want to add with it, because it's a bit of a debate in this space. But I believe that the reason why I'm fighting and it's my mission to help the partners of expats and global nomads in general who need freedom of lifestyle because their families are are dispatched around the globe and things like that to make it, you know, um, so let me focus on the expat partners first to make it, you know, um, a thoughtful and conscious decision to, build something for ourselves. And the reason I believe it's really important, when I say something, it means a career. And in Nomad Nation, you know that I believe that the best solution is building a portable business, building something for yourself that's portable. And the reason why I believe that's important, it doesn't have to always be successful in a huge business, but at least something that allows us to, first of all, have a little bit of safety net because things can go wrong. 
And I think that's what I want to come in and, and um, have you chip in. Things can go wrong. And that's, we don't want to talk about the negative aspect, but we're just having a portable career as small as it can be, can really be a saver. If things go wrong and if we decide to go home, if the marriage breaks down uh, so that we can really have our safety net and a resume that actually shows that something happened during those years. So, and even if it's a business that's um, having a small business can allow you to find a job if you need a bigger revenue uh, because you have a track record, you have online traces of what you've been doing that people that you can prove that you've done it. So that's for me, my message, the choice to make it a, a, a priority priority to build something where we can have a trace if uh, should we need to go back to the labor market i don't know if you want to add anything yeah about that. yeah yeah and as you said it doesn't have to be something huge but but you know i mentioned that uh when i moved in i started having children i felt like i was kind of disconnecting from who i was uh, i was forgetting who i was professionally and i think this is a, a perfect way because if it's something you know portable and something you build um you can i guess choose your level of engagement often and you can choose to you know slow down a little bit when you have children but you don't lose the connection mm. you know you're still a professional uh person uh you still can choose to up it again or you can you know you have something to show if you want to go out and get a job uh i think it's it really with our lifestyle it's 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 almost a perfect solution so yeah. and yeah it can be it can be anything that that you're you know passionate about or you want to contribute or so yeah no i absolutely agree with you about that it's 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 really yeah. important so f f yeah i think we both agree on the fact that making it a focus on building a portable career as a way also to build a safety net, mm -hmm. which comes to the third <laughs> type of choice, which is saying basically stop. I don't want this anymore. So it can be mm -hmm. the move, but it can also be the relationship, the choice of saying stop either for the move or the relationship, because that's something that I know a lot of expert partners do not have the courage to talk about because it's hard. It's really difficult. It's scary. Um, but maybe don't even think about the fact that it is possible to say, hey, I'm done with this, you know? So I'll, can you share your experience with that and your insights? How would you help someone make that decision to say stop? Mm -hmm. and, and just to clarify, it can go both ways. You can yeah. decide to say stop or somebody <laughs> may say that to you. And, um, and in both cases, having your business <laughs> is a nice little safety net because it also happens that you're, you know, caught by surprise. And and I've I've been doing, as you know, I've been doing uh, research and, and and work on expat divorce and some writing on that. And and I have talked to people who were blindsided and 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 kind of had to figure out what to do with their lives, you know, and uh, who went from a state of complete dependence on their partner, you know, financial dependence, especially, and forget about the emotional dependence and family and all that, uh, into scrambling and, and panic and, and, you know, a real struggle to rebuild their lives. So Such a vulnerable that's, situation. Yeah, so, so I've seen that. So that's if it happens to you. Uh, on the other hand, I've also seen uh, people who feel trapped in their marriages because they can't afford, literally can't afford to say, I can't take this anymore uh, because they're completely dependent because they've been away from the job market so long that, that they're, they have no confidence in, in their own abilities and their own ability to get a, to get a job or, or to, to have an income again or to make it on their own. And I see these people trapped, uh, you know, and they stay in marriages uh, where there's no love or where they don't feel supported uh, because they can't get out. So you have, you know, you have different ways. So of, what are your saying, advice yeah. for, for those who are in this situation, in the relationship that's not working? And uh, let's say, first of all, it's not working for them and they can't, they can come to that alignment. And at the end, they're not happy. Uh, so what would you advise to that person to do? So my first advice was to, would be to uh, not leave and to try to make it work, right? To, to, um, to just, just lay the issues on the table. And, and try to find a solution and just try to come in, try to understand where their partner is coming from, even if they're really angry or resentful or, or sad, but, you know, try to see what the other person needs. And, 
what happens often if, and it happened to me, obviously, if you lead with resentment and with anger and with accusations, the other person, person is going to push back. They're going to be defensive. And, and you're kind of stuck. There's no dialogue. You don't, you can't move forward. So ideally, now, you know, in retrospect, what I would have done is I'm I would have... I'm not sure that our yeah. listeners know actually your, your experience. Thank you. Yeah, that's yeah. a good point. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we want to explain first maybe you, the choices you made re regarding that and then we can... Yeah. So before we, ha we go further into this topic, can you please share with us your experience with this so that we can maybe... Um, give more guidance knowing that not everybody's experience is the same, but I think it would be great. That All right. So, um, so yeah, my story is that after spending 11 years in Vienna, um, the opportunity uh, came to, um, through, my, through my, my husband to move to Zurich. And I must say I jumped at the opportunity because um, I, I had to get out of Vienna. And, and what happened is, you know, in my case, I had to get out of an environment that had become very toxic for me, even though I love Vienna, I have many dear friends, you know, it, 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 you know, it was in the end, I felt at home there, but, but the whole background of it, the baggage of it was, was too much. So we moved to Zurich and, and there at some point, uh, I, we realized that we wanted to, uh, to end the marriage. So, so we got a divorce. Uh, mm. a few years ago so yeah so that's that's the background to my so story. you made that choice you you really made that conscious choice and with your partner to stop this relationship that was not working so what would be your tip we're not saying now based on your experience because everybody's relationships are different but knowing that you have also I just want to say that you have that credibility in a way that you've been through it yourself, plus the research you've done with other spouse, uh, expats around the world. What, what would you say are the highlights and main messages you want to share for those who are not happy in their relationships? What steps would you take them through? Mm -hmm. um, something that I, I often tell people is before you do anything, know where you stand. Mm. And that means um, as, as cold, as calculating as it sounds, do your research, get legal advice. If, if you really uh, want to divorce, and, and usually there need to be uh, you know, a lot of reasons for you to want to do that, and every relationship, like you said, is, is different and complex, um, then, then get your facts straight, know what the legal framework is, know what the, the conditions are for filing in one location or another, you know, what's your jurisdiction? Cause you know, in our life, uh, we never know. It might be where you got married. It might be where you're currently living. It might be where you're from or your partner's from. So that, that's why, you know, talking to, a a, a, a a person, a, a lawyer who's qualified um, to deal with international issues is is key here. So that would be the first thing. The other thing would be. I'm um, just going to interrupt you. Yeah. Sorry, one second, Nomad Nation. If you want more information about the legal aspects, we have an episode about that, and I will put it on the link of the show note episode of this uh, web of the website of this episode. Sorry, you will be able to have legal uh, first like insights but then you'll do obviously your own research, but just, just wanted to mention that. Sorry for interrupting Katya. Yeah, absolutely. So what was the yeah. second point then? Um, the second would be to know how your family functions financially. Mm. And that's where um, a lot of us, myself included, sometimes drop out uh, of, of the process of managing our finances and and it's important to educate yourself about that if you're not uh you know fully into it and and know you know what's there what do you have access to can you have access like do you have examples joint accounts or are uh, in some countries you can't if you're not working you can't get a credit card or i mean this is just just know where you stand financially um and and the third thing would be to get support or to gather as much support as you get as you can and uh separation and divorce are ultimately um experiences you go through alone but it's good to have you know friends around you know or or you know whether you know it's emotional support only or practical or legal mm. uh psychological support um you know see what you can get there. Uh, maybe you're in a country where you don't speak the language and you have a friend who's a native speaker 
and who can help you, you know, understand the legal framework, things like that. Just think of what it is you need. Um, and, and the last one would be to just, it's a process. Take deep breaths. It's a process. Try to keep a positive mindset. And that's really hard. I know. Um, it's not an easy process. That's why I would say it's the last resort. I wouldn't, mm. I wouldn't recommend uh, anyone to go through that process. Yeah. But that said, there is light at the end of the tunnel. And I don't see it as an ending. I see it as a new beginning. Mm. You know, and if done the right way, you know, if, if you can find an understanding with your, your partner, your husband, your wife, you know, if you can uh, manage the process well, then, then it can end up being um, the beginning of something new for both of you. Uh, yeah. You know, it's, it's a new life and uh, it works. I mean, <laughs> and you're remarried I, now, right? And I'm remarried now. So yeah, so you can, <laughs> so there is a light us. at the end of the tunnel. I don't want to get married. <laughs> so, yeah. all right. So but, that's uh, great. Uh, thank you for those tips. Cause they were really good. Actually. I want to, I want to repeat them real briefly in Amat Nation, just in case the first one is the legal aspect. Make sure to do, to get legal advice before even actually. And that's one of the major thing I've learned from interviewing a lawyer on divorce. And I guess, like I said, the link will be on the, webpage. This is the main lesson I've learned. Don't talk to your husband about divorce until you did your research, until you got legal advice. That's very important. Second, uh, make sure to know what's happening financially in your household. And that's even if you don't divorce. I mean, there's a lot of people who like partners who drop out of the financial management of the household, which is not very often, actually. No, I would say it happens. Uh, a lot of expert partners are actually in charge of the household finances. Uh, but um, anyhow, if you're not, make sure that you know what's happening financially. Third, make sure that you have a support system. Did I miss anything? Uh, the deep breaths. <laughs> Take a deep breath. <laughs> Take a deep breath and there's a light at the end of the day. It tunnel. will be over eventually. <laughs> yeah. And and like you said, it's a new beginning. It's not the end of something, but you I love that you also said it's not easy. So if you can avoid going through that, try to get the help you need to at least get the understanding you need to be happy in your relationship. So yeah. these are some yeah. insights that we really wanted to talk to about. To talk with you about nomination because we know it's a hard topic but it's so important to call a cat a cat and talk about these topics because we want to support you and we know that things are not always great but I'm thinking Katya that we have the choice to say stop not just to the marriage but we can also simply say stop to that experience abroad and say to our partners I want to go back home right yeah, absolutely. That's that's why, you know, we talked about the flexibility initially, you know, maybe you have an agreement and maybe at some point you have enough. I know, I know my mother after 10 years in Cameroon said, you know what, I'm going back to Greece now. Yeah. I'm done doing this thing. And it was okay, you know, yeah. and, uh, and you can't say stop. I mean, if it's really not working for you yeah. and if you can find fulfillment elsewhere or, you know, yeah. So you know, it doesn't have to be legitimate. <laughs> That's what we no, want. No, absolutely say. not. Actually, you know, my, my mission in life is to make sure, uh, yeah, as I said, people don't, don't learn to do these things the hard way. You know, mm. there's, there's an easier way to do this. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it definitely, I mean, divorce is really the last resort. And in my case, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't about a move or anything. Yeah. So, yeah. as I said, it's much more complex. Be aware that you have a choice. That's, that's key. Yeah. And, and, and thinking that way. Well, I think, you know, putting the, the emphasis on, on how you negotiate the terms of your relationship or your marriage very early on is key. So that's one key. And the other key is the mindset, the mindset of choice, the mindset of empowerment. So for me, those, those are the two keys to, um, to, to, to managing, you know, to your careers on the move. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Katya. So uh, can you please let us know where can we find you? So my website, www.katyavlahos.com, one word. Um, and there you have all my social media. So I'm yeah. Twitter, connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, Facebook. So, you know, all the usual. And uh, just in case somebody needs your help, I think, you, can you tell us what type of coaching you do? So... Um, I work with expats going through different kinds of transitions. So these can be geographical moves. Uh, it can be career change or it can be a relationship breakdown like we just talked about. Mm -hmm. And I especially uh, am passionate about helping women who have somehow lost their connection to their professional identity 
and, and feel like they're not really seen for who they truly are. Uh, I am passionate about helping them reconnect with that identity, uh, reclaim back their power and make empowered decisions, choices uh, for their futures. So, yeah, and that's you know, work. Right? And I recommend also to check out your book, uh, The Great Move. We'll put it also in the webpage of this episode. So thank you so much, Katia. This was an amazing experience. And thanks for inspiring me with this topic. Thank you, Amal. It's been an honor and a true pleasure to be here. So Nomad Nation, make sure to check all these resources for you on the webpage of this episode. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. As usual, stay tuned to turn your challenges into wonderful opportunities.